allow God to work in your scene. Allow God to work in this season. Allow God to work in this difficult dark time. So that when you come out of this difficult dark time, you will be transformed in order to transform. May the Spirit of God transform you so that you are a transformative agent in your community, in your home, on your job, at your work, in your school, in your place of worship. Trust God in the process. I don't know about you, but I came here today to give praise, to give honor and to give glory to our God who is worthy. The psalmist reminds us, he says, let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Hearts full of thanks. And enter his courts with, with praise. With praise. Amen. And the only way that we can praise him today is in spirit and in truth. And in the very beauty of holiness. We have come today to worship the Lord our God, to give him honor, to give him glory, and to give him praise. I want us to turn our attention to the book of Psalm. We want to read the eighth Psalm, Psalm 8. Let us read alternately. I will begin with verse 1, and then we will follow accordingly. We read the last verse, verse 9 together. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set your glory above the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and have crowned him with glory and honor. All sheep and oxen, yea, the beast of the field. Let us read together the ninth and the last verse. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, the people of God, have come to rejoice and be glad in it. Let us remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, according to thy gracious word. According to thy grace. Just word in me, humility. This will I do, my dying Lord. I will remember thee. I will remember. Bloody sweat 
and not remember thee, and not remember thee. When to the cross I turn my night and rest on Calvary. O Lamb of God, my sacrifice, I must remember shall praise the Lord. Just give him glory. Glory to God. Amen. Our Father and our God, we are so grateful for your having extended us another opportunity to grace these hollow walls, to come with hearts and minds focused on you, Father, with praises on our lips unto you, the one true and the living God. God, we acknowledge that you woke us up this morning, Heavenly Father. You again, oh God, extended your mercy toward each and every one of us. Mercies that are undeserving. Mercies that we did not merit. But you saw fit, oh God, to yet allow us to be in the land of the living, where we can again praise you and worship you and magnify the name of the Lord our God. So allow the light of Christ to be seen in and through us in a world that is filled with darkness a world that is filled with gloom and chaos God you've called us to be the light of the world you've called us to be the salt of the earth so father we've come today to worship our God and to do so in spirit and in truth and in the very beauty of holiness because it is the only worship that you will receive. So Father, as we come today, we come, oh God, presenting ourselves to you, asking in the name of Jesus, God, that you would look into each and every one of our hearts right now. And if there is anything within us, Father, that you see that is displeasing or unacceptable, anything that would serve as a hindrance from allowing us to give you pure worship and pure praise. God, we ask that you would remove it right now. Cleanse us, O oh God. Allow us to have vessels that are acceptable unto you, that can worship you and glorify your name, that our praises can ascend the portals of heaven as a sweet-smelling savor before your nostrils. Bless us today, O oh God as we wait on you, Heavenly Father. God, we come with an expectation to hear from heaven today. 
We know that there is a word for your people today, Father. A word that will lift the bowed down heads. A word that will heal, deliver, and set free. A word that will restore. We come expecting. Because we know that you're a God who is able to deliver. So we thank you today, Father. We lift up the one now that will break the bread of life today. In the person of Reverend Hutchison. God, we ask a fresh anointing in this hour. As never yet before. As we wait to hear from you, Father. As he presents himself as a vessel to be used of you, Father. That you will speak through to your people today. God, anoint him afresh. That as he opens his mouth, oh God, to declare your word, that your word will go forth. Your word will minister to your people today. It will meet each and every one at their point of need. Thank you, Heavenly Father. That we can expect to receive from you today. And so anoint him from the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing a work in him even now. All for the honor and glory of our God. Have your way now throughout this service. Let your will be done, Father, and ours be done away with. God, we declare today that we've come with one agenda, and that is to worship you. We were created to glorify God. So, Heavenly Father, we come in obedience to that which you require of us. Again, thy kingdom come. Thy will and thy will alone be done on earth as it is in heaven. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. This is our humble prayer. We ask it in the matchless name of Jesus who is the Christ. We humbly pray and all of God's people say, Amen. Our invocation of song, oh, for a closer walk with God. We certainly are happy 
I'm delighted to have you in service with us this morning. You know, we believe that the body of Christ anywhere is the body of Christ everywhere because there is only one body of Christ. And so we certainly invite you into the Assembly of Bethel this morning to be a part of this worship experience. As we always say, we believe that your steps no doubt have been divinely orchestrated that you would be right here in service with us this morning. And we hope that you came with an expectation to receive from God today. We welcome you on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Timothy Stewart, all the associate ministers and officers in this fine congregation here at Bethel. We invite you in service this morning. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, you are duly welcome. God bless you. Amen. The Benevolence and We Care Ministries of Bethel have embarked upon a mission to provide families of Bethel Baptist Church who are in need of assistance with a food box once per month for at least a year during these challenging times. As a contribution during this 230 year of celebration, we are asking members and persons interested in To Feed a Family to contribute a small donation of $50. Funds may be dropped off at the church or donated online at the church's website at Historic Bethel Baptist Church .org. Special prayer request goes out to the following persons Deacon Sidney Stirrup, Brother Ivan Johnson, and Brother Reginald Roll. We pray that God continues to keep you and bring you through this challenging time. Bethelites, due to the current surge in COVID 19 cases, we ask that you please adhere to the protocol guidelines put forth by the government by wearing a mask when out in public, going out only when it is necessary, practicing social distancing while out six feet, and sanitizing and washing your hands frequently for the safety of everyone. Together, we can beat COVID-19. May God bless and keep you and your families. You are invited to join Bethel Baptist Church Lockdown Workout Sessions every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 a.m. with Brother Don Knowles, who is a certified trainer. Get the whole family involved as we together lose some inches and get into shape. Ladies, you are all invited to join the live talk I can survive this, you have what it takes, every Thursday at 6 p.m. with Rev. Levette McFall via Zoom. For more information, please contact the church at WhatsApp 323-5000. Tune in and be blessed. We want to say a special anniversary greeting, a shout out to those who are celebrating anniversaries. We are so glad that you've tuned in. And those who have celebrated birthdays, God bless each of you indeed. It is a gift to be alive. And finally, we want to send out sincere condolences to those families who have lost loved ones in recent times. We want you to know that we are praying for you and we are asking that God provides the comfort and the strength that you need during this time. We thank you so much for joining us and we pray that God would 
bless you with his choicest blessings on this day. God bless you. If you would like to contact the church, please send us an email at info at bbc1790.org or you can send an inquiry to our website through the button that says contact us. If you'd like to give to this ministry, there are four opportunities for you to give. One, you can give to us through our Royal Bank of Canada account, our main branch account, the account number 2895688, or through our Bank of the Bahamas account. The main branch again, branch code 157, account number 1350001435. Otherwise, you can give through an internal transfer if you have a Royal Bank account or a Bank of the Bahamas account, a bank-to-bank -bank transfer if you have online banking from another institution, or over the counter if you happen to be in one of those institutions and would like to make a deposit over the counter. Or if you'd like, you can simply go to our website, Historic Bethel Baptist, and click on our Give button. That will give you an opportunity to give via credit or debit card. And you can specify exactly which ministry you would like to give funds to so that we can direct those funds accordingly. God bless you. Amen. And you know, church, I think it's so important that we realize that the times of uncertainty in which we live I believe that even as we near the coming of the Lord, you know, those times becoming more and more uncertain. And I say that to say to us that more than ever before, right, you need to know that your worship is for real. Amen? More than ever before, whenever we are given the opportunity to give God praise, honor, and glory, we need to do so as though it is our last time. Amen? Because he is a God who is deserving of our worship. Amen? Glory be to God. At this time, we're going to prepare for a solo that will be rendered by Brother Craig Ferguson. And after he would have sung his solo, our speaker for this morning's service will come before us. One who is a ministerial colleague, a friend, a brother, in many respects have been a mentor. I thank God for him and the anointing that is on his life. I thank God for his humility, the extent to which he continues to allow the Lord to use him and to be led of his Holy Spirit. And I have no doubt in my mind that there is indeed a word from heaven today. And I believe he will indeed walk in obedience to give to us that which the Lord has laid on his heart today. And so I pray that you will join me in welcoming to present the word of God today, none other than our own. Reverend A. DeWitt Hutchison, who will come after this solo by our brother Craig Ferguson. God bless you. Time measured out my days Life carried me alone In my soul I learned to follow God But you would never be so strong I looked hard at this world to learn how heaven could be gay. Just to end where I began between heaven always in Oh, it's 
not for grace I can tell you where I'd be wandering down some pointless road to nowhere with my salvation up to me I know how that would go The battles I would face Forever running but losing the race Pastor of this blessed assembly, Timothy Stewart, who in his 38th year pastors the oldest Baptist church in the Bahamas. Blessings to his wife, Sister Sharon, and the support that they have offered over the years to Reverend Chris Brown, who presides a colleague, a cousin, and a trusted friend. We also today say thank you, God, to each and every one of you who have come out this morning. You look so good from where I stand as you sit in the congregation eager to hear the word of God. We send greetings to those who could not physically be here with us, and numbered among them would be Reverend Charles Moxie and Reverend Kendall Nottage. Additionally, a special hello to Ray and Addie Winder and a birthday month friend of mine, Bruce Delancey. Special hello to them all. Today we want to consider a brief thought from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. This is a very familiar scripture. 
you will recognize it immediately. There are many verses in this chapter that are favorites of Christians. The 28th verse of Romans 8 reads on this wise, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And we want to consider for a brief thought this morning, trust the process. Trust the process. Join me now in bowing your heads. We bless you and thank you, O oh God, for your presence in this building, in our lives, and the move of your spirit during this difficult, dark time. We thank you for the peace that comes amidst uncertainty and the joy and anticipation because we know the end is a winning experience. We trust you in the process of this journey. Amen. Trust the process. The book of Romans is a very interesting book in fact, it is regarded as the constitution of Christianity, and for some it is called the Christian Manifesto because of the great themes of doctrine and theology, it has been regarded as the cathedral of Christian faith. This book comes to us from the first century of the Common Era, around 56 to 58 A.D., written by the Apostle Paul at Corinth on his third missionary journey. What is appropriate and I believe informative for us is that this book has several distinct purposes for its authorship. And as we unfold this brief verse, we invite you to consider. Paul writes to the church, at Rome to teach them the fundamental doctrine of salvation in order for them to be fortified against the Jews who were coming against them in a contrary manner. Secondly, the book to the Romans was written to expand and explain the unbelief of Israel and to vindicate the faithfulness of God in his dealing with Israel. And the third reason for the book of Romans to be written by Paul at Corinth, and this I believe is most appropriate, to give practical instructions concerning Christian living in the society of his day. So with that in mind, I want us to consider as we trust the process, that we are living in unprecedented times. Someone has said that this pandemic is the first since the pandemic of 1918-1920. It is a time of great uncertainty, a time of great difficulty, a time of stress, a time of confusion, a time of doubt, a time of despair, and yes, a time of anger. We are challenged like never be before to make sense of what we thought was normal in life. It is normal to hug persons that you love. It is normal as adults to be able to move our own bodies to and fro without having to be told where to go, when to go, how long to stay, when to come inside, and it seems like we are reliving our childhood where we were taught by our mothers and our dads, wash your hands. In fact, that is something that we are doing now so more than in living memory. All of which we are told is done to protect us from an ad invisible adversary who is ubiquitous, who is all over the place. In fact, we could be standing in the room with someone who is infected. That is how prevalent 
That is how ubiquitous, that is how widespread this unseen virus is. Paul, writing to the church at Rome, challenges them because he understood that difficult and dark days would be ahead. The chapter from which our text comes from, the eighth chapter, speaks to us of life in the Spirit. And many of you are familiar with words from this chapter. Verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And then verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Verse 15, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. Verse 16, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. These all tell of a lifestyle predicated on prior knowledge of and relationship with Jesus that produces the spirit-filled walk. Verse 18, we believe, is apropos because it anchors our current condition. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So as we deal with difficult, dark times, we are anchored in verse 18 as we move toward our text in general, verse 28. Have you been tempted? Have you been struggling? Have you been so challenged in your life as you are now? Dealing with the strains and the stresses of life. You're dealing with intimacy. Who to allow around you? Who, who to stay away from? You're dealing with relationships. You are locked down with people whom you are in relationship with or who you know, but there is in the back of your mind a sense, not necessarily of urgency, but suspicion. Perhaps this person who is a part of my life, my inner circle, my sphere of influence, who might cause me to get sick or someone that I might cause to get sick. And then we are dealing with the struggles and the strains of everyday life. The loss of loved ones. The illness of the body. The embarrassment of dwindling assets. The tragedy of no assets at all. The hopelessness and despair of homelessness. And the fact that many seemingly even of faith do not care about our struggles as together we walk life's Jericho Road. Jesus speaks to us from two millennia past. And he speaks to us from Paul the Apostle as he speaks specifically in verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to to his purpose. We want you to trust the process. There are two things that we want to pull from that particular verse, and then we will take our seats. Two specific things. The first thing, all things work together for good to them that love God. All things, says Paul, work together for good. Paul never tells us that all things are good, but he tells us that all things ultimately work together for good. There is a good, there is the absence of the bad, but there is a good that is predicated on the fact that it is orchestrated by God. So good is not just happenstance. Good is not just I hope good is not just good luck. There is a divine design, a divine order, a divine expectancy, a divine urgency 
to what is going on in our lives as we look towards our good God. But in our working our faith so that God works to our good, we have to do something. And the first thing is, and this is the human perspective. This is the human dimension to those that love God. So if, if you're suffering embarrassment in some way or another, if you are suffering need or neglect or want, then the Bible speaks to you specifically if you love God. So Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit orchestrated by the word given to us from Paul guarantees us that all things work together for good to those who love God. If you love God today, then you have a right to expect that God will work all things to your good. That even in the sadness and the bitterness of your experience, that God is working things out. Even in the tragedy of your darkness, even in your midnight hour, as you press your head towards a pillar of affliction or sickness or death, all things ultimately work together for good to those who love God. And God knows when you love him. Love is predicated, as I said before, on intimacy and prior knowledge. When we love God, we do what is right. When we love God, we are faithful. When we love God, we trust him. When we love God, we treat one another right. When we love God, we know how to speak to people. When we love God, we are faithful. When we love God, we may be struggling because we are living in a fallen world. And the curse of that fallen world impacts all that we do. The physical is cursed. But when we love God, the Bible says all things ultimately work together for good. The first then is the human perspective. The second point is the divine perspective. And that comes from the B part of verse 28. To them who are the called according to his purpose. The, for those of you who are English students, is a definite article. The means that there is no ambiguity. Ambiguity. There is no varying. There is no ifs or buts. There is decisive and unmatched urgency based on the fact that God identifies who he is talking about. To those who are the called. So if you are a Christian, then you are the called. Not a called, you are the called. So the divine perspective is that those who love God are those who are called by God according to his purpose. God's purpose is that all things ultimately work together for good. God's purpose is that we live in kingdom principles. God's purpose is that we enjoy his presence and that we grow and that we mature. All things work together for good. That clause, that, that phrase, work together, is interesting. Because in, in the Greek, this active voice, present tense of the verb work together, comes from the Greek word synergy. And it simply means that God is emphasizing that in his divine providence, he is continuing his activity to work on our behalf. In other words, God does not wait for bad things to happen to you and then he employs good. God does not take a recess. Paul is saying that God is constantly 
actively, consistently working on our behalf, behind the scenes, so that whatever happens, the good and the bad, God harmonizes the good and the bad so that all things ultimately work together for our good. Bethel, trust the process. Do not give in. Do not give up. Do not give out. Allow God to work in your scene. Allow God to work in this season. Allow God to work in this difficult dark time. So that when you come out of this difficult dark time, you will be transformed in order to transform. May the Spirit of God transform you so that you are a transformative agent in your community, in your home, on your job, at your work, in your school, in your place of worship. Trust God in the process. I don't know about you this morning, Bethel, but... These past six months have been difficult. These past six months have been vexing. These past six months have been daunting. These past six months have been frustrating. But the Bible tells us in 18 of the same chapter that the tragedies, the struggles of this present time are not to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Did you know that as dark as now is, we are going to look back nostalgically at this difficult dark time and say, boy, March through September were the good old days. The, the Bible says it's going to get worse. The Bible says it's going to get more vexing. The Bible says it's going to be more frustrating. Difficult dark times are coming. Difficult times do not last, but tough times and struggled and difficult people who survived those times do. Gird yourselves. Gird yourselves. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Lift up your voice. Trust God in the process. Remember that he is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, all of whom trusted him during the difficult dark times. He is the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and the bed and he go, they trusted him during the difficult dark times. He is the God of Daniel. He trusted him during difficult dark times. He is the God of the disciples of the New Testament. They trusted God during those difficult dark times. So we are not Christians living our journey and going on a flowery bed of ease throughout this journey called life. There will be challenges. There will be struggles. There will be times of uncertainty. But we serve a certain God who will always be there and who will give us a song to sing in the night. So our perspective, our ingredient, our dimension, our contribution is that we love God. God's perspective, God's contribution God's way of seeing things is that you must love him and he will call you and he will work things out to the good. Experience the bad now, but know that those bad days will not always last. Struggle through the bad. It's not a crime to be dealing with bad times. You shouldn't be embarrassed because you are hurting right now. You shouldn't feel sad because you're going through difficult times. Trust God. Struggle with the bad. Wrestle like Jacob did with the angel. And ask God to, to bless you. Tell him you won't let him go until he blessed you. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Believe in God. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him, or and o'er, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, 
Oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad. I've learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me. Will be with me to the end. So I'm going to struggle through the dark times. I'm struggling through neglect. I'm going to struggle through illness. I'm going to struggle through uncertainty. I'm going to struggle through brokenness. I'm going to struggle through fracturedness. I'm going to struggle through want. But I'm going to trust Jesus. I'm going to trust the process. Because behind the struggles, there is the power of God working all things together for our good because we love him and we are called by him. God bless you. We give God thanks for the word today. We thank him for the obedience of a servant who in humility declared the word of God today and just gave us a sobering reminder that there is a process to life and we have to trust the process and you know it's amazing when we consider it because we look at it in the natural and we see that there is a process the extent to which one is born into the world and there's a migration from that of infancy to as the, as the, as the child grows from one stage to the next right and they become an adult there is a process that they go through in like manner, there is a spiritual process that you and I are challenged to go through as we profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And you know, he reminded us as well that there is a perspective and that there's a divine perspective that all things work together for, the, for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his divine purpose to his divine purpose and so the gospel has been preached today and we were made to understand that there is indeed a divine purpose he reminded us that in life we're going to go through challenges, we're going to go through struggles. And the truth be told, sometimes as we go through those struggles, we're asking God, well, where are you in the midst of my struggle? I can't seem to hear your voice. I can't seem to feel your presence. Because we're going through a time of struggle. But guess what? Realize today that as you go through and when you would have come through that struggle, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, financial, do you know that God is right there with you in the struggle? And in fact, it's not your smarts that's bringing you through it, you know. It is God, even in that, extending to you his grace. And his mercies that's bringing you through. So he's always with us. Even as we go through the struggle. I want to invite us to stand today. The word of God has been preached. A very direct word to us today. Letting us know that as we sojourn through life it doesn't matter the challenges that we encounter we can keep top of mind that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose and so the question to you today is whether or not you are able to exercise that faith in God to believe that given where you are and what you may be going through that it is indeed working together for your good because I know it can be real rough sometimes and you may wonder how is it possible that this can possibly be working together for my good 
I don't know where the next meal is coming from. I don't know how I'm going to be able to pay that next bill. I don't know I'm, I'm going to get through this crisis. But it's your opportunity to exercise your faith in a God who is able. So the first order of business is to ask the question, do you have a relationship with him? Do you know him today? Have you embraced him? Have you welcomed him to be your Lord and Master? So that you can trust the process. So we extend an invitation today. If there is one who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and I dare say that given these troubling times in which we live, I would shudder to go through life not knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If there is one, I just invite you at this time, right where you are, just to raise your hand. If there is one among us in the sanctuary, just raise your hand in acknowledgement that, no, I don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and I want to accept him today to be my Lord and Master. If there is one. And if you know him, but for yourself you're going through a time wherein you're struggling and, and you don't know from one day to the next how you're going to make it. And it seems as though the enemy is fighting you on every side. This is a good opportunity for you to anchor your faith in the relationship with this God that you claim as your Lord and Master. with every confidence believe that he will bring you through we're going to approach the throne of grace as we bow our heads now in reverence we look to the Lord in prayer let us pray our Father and our God we come again grateful and thankful for your word that you have given us today through your man sir thank you Heavenly Father for feeding us the bread of life today thank you Heavenly Father for speaking to our hearts and reminding us oh God that there is indeed a process and that you are with us in the process ensuring that we will get through the process that we only have but to keep our eyes focused and stayed on you knowing that you are the enabler, you are the sustainer, you are the one who has promised that you would never leave us, that you would never forsake us, that you are right there with us, through thick and thin you are with us, oh God, bringing us through the process. So Father, we thank you again that our confidence and our faith is anchored in you. You are the omnipotent God. You are the all-powerful God. You are the God in whom there is no lack. You are the God who is able to do that, which is exceedingly and abundantly and above whatever we can ask or even think. You are the omniscient God. Whatever circumstance, whatever situations we find ourselves confronting in life, you already knew. There was nothing that is hid from you. So we believe with every confidence, God, that if you've brought us to it, God, you will see us through it. You are that kind of God. You are a faithful God faithful God thank you Lord God for your faithfulness thank you for the assurance of your word that we can stand on today with every confidence and assurance that heaven and earth will pass away 
What's your word? Your word, your word remains and will stand eternal throughout the countless ages of eternity. That you are your word, remain one and the same. So we thank you for your word that you've given us today. God, we embrace it today. We thank you that even now it's ministering to each and every one of us meeting us at our point of need once again. Thank you, Father. Thank you for feeding us today. Again, we thank you for your man's servant, Reverend Hutchison, Father. Continue to strengthen him. Continue to encourage his heart, oh God. Continue to shape him into that vessel that you would use in your service, oh God. Now more than ever before. Thank you again for each and every one that is in service today. God, we bless you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who would want to be here, but for one, run, one reason or the other was unable to make it. We are reminded that you are omnipresent, God. That you're everywhere. So we thank you for your blessings upon your people everywhere today. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Continue to be Lord and Master of our lives. In Jesus' precious name, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand as we bring this wonderful service to a close. By singing our closing hymn, Tell Me the Old, Old Story. Amen. Jesus and his love.
now unto him who is able to keep us all from falling and to present us faultless before his father's throne with exceeding great joy to the only wise God be glory and majesty dominion and power henceforth now and forevermore amen